back again. Well, I did promise a report back some 12 months after my last video. Unfortunately, it's only some six, seven months after my last video. And uh, I am reporting back, and I can report back the success of my project in one word, and that is disaster. The thermostat which I had purchased faulted and did not turn off so the heaters, the light globes that I had just stayed on and the inside of the hives got hotter and hotter and hotter and I noticed this from uh, the photo you can see here I, all the bees around the outside of the hive I thought that doesn't seem right so I came inside and as soon as I came inside the shed I could see I could smell and I could see honey and molten wax just absolutely everywhere. So the box was so hot, I couldn't physically touch it in my hands. So I had to put gloves on and get it out of there as quickly as possible. Uh, lucky the house or the shed didn't burn down. I did have another hive, which had been uh, inhabited once before, which was empty. So I immediately put that inside and the bees came back inside and uh, monitored them 24 hours a day virtually. and. Uh, they seemed to have settled back and the ones that did survive just kept on doing their business and started building the hives up again. I ordered a safety cutout switch to fit to the hive, monitored the thermostat on a daily basis as I said, but unfortunately uh, two days before the safety cutout arrived, because I had to get it from the States, um, it took about three weeks to get here. The same thing happened again and this time uh, the wax when it melted it, it sealed the entrance to the hive and unfortunately everything was lost or nothing survived. So I felt um, really bad, I was devastated in fact and uh, to, to, to such a loss through, uh, through no fault of my own. But I have replaced the, the thermostat and that's another story. Um, I would not be dealing with those people again. It took emails and emails and threats to the police and all sorts of things, um, legal action to get them to even bother to responding to my emails, let alone replace the faulty uh, thermostat. And, and unfortunately, you know, I did try to do the right thing, bought local and bought an Australian made product, but so unfortunately uh, it didn't work. Anyway, it has been replaced. I have, um, replaced uh, the thermostat and I have installed the safety cutout switch. Uh, I've done some graph work on, on the, actually the, the safety cutout switch which I will show you now. Okay here's a graph of the, the temperature within the bar fridge monitored with the data logger over a period of each one of those periods there is six hours so 6 12 18 nearly 24 hours and you can see that it did control reasonably well but it was controlling at a temperature at just over 40 degrees that's 40.8 degrees there so it was a bit high I didn't want it to go that high because I felt long term if we happen to be away for any period of time long term that could uh, could still cause issues so that's when I decided to spray the, the, uh, the front control with some matte black paint to um, just to see if the absorption would lower the temperature. So here's the graph of it painted black and it's exactly the same scale and as you can see by sliding that over the there there's not that much difference. In fact if uh, you superimpose those graphs together there is no difference at all. It's controlling exactly the same rate at exactly the same temperature range. So that's when I decided to move the unit and moved it to the roof and there is the graph of the roof. It's on a different scale. Now our maximum temperature here is cutting out at less than 36 degrees and cutting back in again when it gets down to just over 30. So this unit was purchased to cut out at 37 degrees which it, to the nearest degree it is doing. So now that that's mounted in the roof, I'm much happier with a cutout of uh, less than 36 than I was with over 40. So that's the last level of uh, defense, I guess, if you like. This is the back top right hand corner of the fridge where the thermostat was mounted. The 
Following the disaster, I thought I'd best work out another way to heat this because I'm certainly not going to do the same thing again. So uh, you've seen I've bought the safety cutout switch and put that in and you've seen the results from that. You've seen the graph of the results of the heater. Well, this is how I quickly made my test heater. I took a piece of the nichrome wire. I calculated 10 watts, which for this piece of wire was a bit less than, uh, than one meter. I think for my final version, even that, I will, I will, I'll take that out to a meter. That will give me just a, a little bit less than, uh, than 10 watts. But the way I tried it is I had a spare backing of a, an electrician's PowerPoint lying around and I just got a four long screws like that put it through and I had a piece of a garden riser for the garden watering system so I just screwed that into the screw there like that four of those I reinforced it a little bit with a coat hanger wire square on the top and then wound my heater wire around it put a bit of glue on there and that's what I mounted inside my fridge with the fan blowing over it that way to produce the results from the graph. I added another safety feature, this would not draw more than one amp, but I figured if something happened and the wire shorted out or it actually vibrated and moved and the length became less, it would draw more current and still be in a position where it could heat or if something fell onto it. So what I did, I put a fuse in line there so I had a, um, a two amp fuse, so that still should be, uh, should be fine. So that was my uh, experimental uh, test one, and now I'm going to, uh, to take it a step further. Just give you a closer look at, uh, at that, it's nothing special. Uh, it was just there to do a job, and I think it, it did the job, and the job that it did was, it did well. So now I'll make a more permanent one. The transformer I used to heat it, run it was one of these big beasts. It was a, it's an outdoor garden light one. It's a 12 volt, 400 watt. So it's, it's very, very big, very, very heavy, which is why I didn't want to use it. But it certainly supplied, uh, it supplied the power that I needed which is only 12 volts at less than one amp after all. So what I've decided to do is I have a couple of these lying around and these are becoming a far more uh, available commodity. And that is a PC power supply. 